How can I help? At once. Careful and quiet. Forward. Careful Onward. and quiet. Of course. It shall be done. At once. Of course. Onward. shall be done. Careful and quiet. Onward. Careful and quiet. Forward. Careful Onward. and quiet. Agreed. Forward. It shall be done.
agreed. Careful and quiet. Careful and quiet. At once.
course. I'll try to keep this shit. Yes? Agreed. Speak your mind. Okay. You're too fast. At once. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. To victory. May the gods have mercy on you. Take that. What's up? Whatever you need. Your command? Of course. Yes, very well. Your Speak your mind. Your life is forfeit. Are you ready for me? Agreed. It shall be done. Forward. Onward. Very well. How can I? It shall be done. Yes, forward. Yep. Speak your mind forward. Agreed. 
Of course. At once. Agreed. Greetings, adventurers. Pardon me while I gather my thoughts. Who are you, and what has just come to pass? Indeed you have, noble adventurers. It must have taken great courage and strength to make it as far as you did, let alone restore some balance to my thoughts. I am eternally in your debt. But surely you did not come to the hand of the Sandorino Wim. Tell me what it is you seek. You wish to learn what came to pass with the hand of the Sandorino Very well. There is much to tell. Shall I start with the time of prosperity, the betrayal, or our darkest hour? In light of the greater threat of the orcish and goblin hordes of the north, we elves allied ourselves with the dwarves. The alliance was a desperate one, but it was either that or fall to the dark hordes. As both races prospered from our mutual cooperation, we furthered our bonds by creating powerful artifacts and weapons. Delicate dwarven craftsmanship combined with ancient elven magic yielded items of great power and unsurpassed beauty. With the unity of our two races wielding the magical benefits of our labor, the hordes were easily kept in check. Our cooperation continued and we prospered in harmony for many decades until the betrayal. You will need to be patient as this is a bitter subject for me. A great debate ensued with our dwarven allies regarding the magic items created by our union. It seems the greed inherent in all dwarves could not be contained. They wanted to begin selling our magic items to the other settlements in the north. Preposterous, I told them, to allow others access to these artifacts, all for the sake of profit. Dwarves cannot resist their selfish nature for war. My people and I were adamant that the humans were not to have any access to any magical artifacts. After many months of debate, the dwarves conceded, and we thought the issue done. Then, a day came that marked the fate of both races. Our forces encountered what we thought another typical group of the orc and goblin hordes. What should have been an easy battle turned out to be a hard-fought victory, for they were using artifacts and weapons created by the Alliance. Furious, we questioned the dwarves about this. No elf would ever give our greatest treasures to a hated enemy. The dwarves, of course, denied our accusations. In honor of our alliance through the decades, we extended our trust further and tried to come to some solution. We were fools to believe we could coexist with these rock eaters. Any and all discussions just turned into open argument and further accusations. Did the dwarves think we'd be stupid enough to assume that the artifacts just magically appeared in the Horde's camps? As to be expected, open conflict broke out. The decades of friendship and prosperity ended that day. The Alliance was no more. On that day, the elves of the Hand of the Seldarine were alone against the dwarves and the goblinoid hordes. You wish to learn what came to pass within the Hand of the Seldarine? Very well. There is much to tell. Shall I start with the time of prosperity, the betrayal, or our darkest hour? Centuries ago, the Hand of the Seldarine waged war with the dark hordes encroaching on the north. This war waged for decades. We were isolated from the rest of the elves south of 
us. With no support from our brothers and sisters, and impending doom at our doorstep, I became desperate. I concocted a plan to protect my people and buy us some time. Ancient elven magic speaks of a spell used in days of old, named the Mythal. This Mythal embodies the land with a living and protective life force, personifying all that is elven. This living force can also be given abilities of a protective nature, powers that would have kept the Dark Hordes away from the hand of the Seldarine and its surrounding lands. A chance to buy my people time and to marshal reinforcements from our southern brothers and sisters. Some say believing we had the power to bestow such magic was arrogance. Others would say using the Mythal in such a way was blasphemous. I stand by my decision. I did what I had to do to save my people. We began the preparations to lay a Mythal. In the weeks that came to pass, we fortified what remained of our forces within the Hand. My wizards and I locked ourselves within this tower and began the arduous process of laying a mythal. Within this time, the orcs and goblins sensed our weakened state and moved in for the kill. The largest force we had ever seen besieged the Hand, and the mythal was not near completion. We knew this was our last stand. Every elf that fell, the Horde paid tenfold. For all the sacrifices my people made, the last line was breached in a week's time. As the Horde began ascending the towers and the last of the defenders fell, I realized my people's sacrifice was not made in vain. We completed the last incantations for the Mythal. The spell was cast, and a shroud of pure light and energy engulfed the hand. As I watched what I thought was our salvation enter every crevice of the hand, I became horrified. Something had gone terribly wrong. The force that was supposed to bring life to the land began to twist and corrupt it. It was draining everything and everyone within the hand of its soul. I watched as every living thing within the hand of the Seldarine had its life drained to the brink of death, driving them mad. Those who died in the battle began to rise as hideous undead. It was at this point where I realized I wasn't the only one watching the rampant destruction of the Hand and all within. Standing before me was Labellus Enereth, the elven god of longevity and time. He was angry with me, angry as he saw the most ancient of elven magic used with carelessness, angry as he watched the lives of the land of his people being unnaturally Stone Gem is an ancient artifact from a time long forgotten. Its most notable owners were the Druids of Kaldahar before one within their circle stole the gem. It was thought forever lost, until now. The Heartstone Gem contains powerful scrying abilities that can divine the affairs of people throughout the realms. There are only a few within the land who know how to release its powers. I am one of them. With that said, what is it you seek to learn from the Heartstone Gem? Then you will have what you seek. Hand me the Heartstone Gem. Freed from the shackles of his tormented mind, the cursed Elven Lord was at last able to assist the heroes in their quest. Handing over the Heartstone Gem, the party stood back and watched Laro begin his divination. With the artifact raised before him,
clutched tightly in his skeletal hands. The undead sorcerer peered intently into the gem as he whispered a series of strange chants and incantations. A spark of light briefly flashed within the gem, as if a ray of sunlight had caught upon its surface. And suddenly, reflected within the mirrored facets of the stone, there appeared an image of a statue. The statue was clearly a monument of sorts, depicting an elf and a dwarf sitting side by side on a dual throne. Even if Labellus' curse had taken my eyesight, I would still recognize that hole. What you have seen is Dorne's deep den of the betrayers. And here is where the wretched dwarves hollowed out their home. Be warned if your journey takes you there. If any of the dwarves remain, expect no quarter, for they will give none. Believe none of their lies, as they will all lead to treachery. If you do decide to venture forth to that dwarven vestige of evil, will mark its location on your map. Also, I have the power to take you there if you wish. My beloved daughter, I see you are thorough in your search of the hand. The last entries describe her resolve to find a way to reforge the union with those accursed dwarves. I never saw her again. Fools! Can you not discern it with your own mind? Those dwarves committed the worst atrocity knowing its impact on me. They murdered my daughter. For that I will never forgive them. For the punishment I suffered for my arrogance and pride, Labellus be damned if he thinks I will forgive them for what they did. I would stay in this cursed form, never to see Arvindor, if it meant I could make the dwarves pay for their crime. Leave now! I will not speak of this anymore. You have returned. Your command at once. <laughs> 